Hi, my name is Todd Swank and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Nortech and I'm here today with Dom Daninger, Vice President of Engineering for Nortech and uh, we're going to do a new video on the difference between enterprise hard drives and desktop hard drives. Now Dom, as you know, we sell a lot of custom servers at Nortech, a lot of custom systems and I'll tell you what, I, I deal with customers every single day. It seems like somebody wants me to quote them a server using desktop hard drives. The price is so much sure. less than enterprise hard drives, but I know that we shouldn't be doing that, especially in servers. What should I be telling my customers why they should be using right. enterprise hard drives instead of desktop? Right. And uh, it's a good question, and as Todd said, that comes up frequently, and it's a very tempting uh, thing to uh, move over into uh, using the desktop hard drives in a uh, uh, server environment or an enterprise level environment, even in the small business applications. And the basic question that one has to honestly ask themselves uh, and or their customer is how important is that data that, that's going there? And, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, even in the smaller servers there's some type of a RAID arrangement there. So that means there's multiple drives and uh, the reason you have multiple drives there is uh, if that data wasn't important, you probably wouldn't even be going to that level of redundancy. But when you do go to multiple drives, uh, you are running into issues that I will address a little bit later, things like rotational vibration and, and, and that kind of thing. But uh, the, uh, some of the uh, other uh, issues that you run into that are even more basic and fundamental than that is there's really about three levels of drives out there in the industry. There's the desktop, you know, it's kind of similar to a notebook drive. It's, the big thing is there, that's the, those desktop and notebook drives, they have the shortest mean time between failure. So these, these manufacturers, they're designing things to a specific price target. Right. And when you get into the desktop and notebook drives, it's really, optimized for low cost. Absolutely. And, uh, Which is why my customers keep asking me. To exactly. <laughs> and so what they're looking at, what they do then, they design to a eight hour a day, five day a week type of usage, worst case. And, and they're betting that a lot of people, you know, really aren't using it that hard. Uh, hence you uh, also will have a shorter warranty. So you got a lower cost, uh, less well designed drive uh, that, that is knowing it's, it's designed, it's going to fail earlier. Right. A typical mean time between failure for a desktop or notebook uh, drive is about 700,000 hours of usage. Okay. Um, sounds like a lot, but then even the next step up takes you to 1.2 million hours of usage calculated on a 24 by 7 usage. You're talking about the enterprise drives. The, and these are the enterprise near line drives. All right. There's really two levels of the enterprise and the next step uh, Seagate calls them mission critical drives. They're even designed to a higher level of mean time between failure of around 2 million hours of usage. The other things that uh, are in there is any drive because of the design nature of them you know, you've got things like the head floating over the rotating media at uh, the uh, about two nanometers clearance there, which is just mind-boggling if they even work at all. Two nanometers is ten copper atoms side by side. Wow. That's the clearance that you're dealing with there. And that's just one of the design parameters that's so critical. And that's in the enterprise drives again. That, that, that's in any of these drives, that kind of clearance. So I'm going to tell you what my customers would tell me because uh, mm -hmm. I have this conversation every day. It's like, okay. well, of course my data is critical. I can't imagine anybody building a server that sure. doesn't consider the data critical. So, sure. Uh, but the reason I'm putting in multiple drives is to right. uh, compensate for that. I'm going to right. have a mirror or I'm going to have a RAID 5. I'm going to have sure. multiple drives. If one drive fails... Uh, I'll have these other drives to back it up or to right. uh, to be able to switch over to. Right. And, you know, I can almost buy, you know, two hard drives for the same price as one enterprise drive. Sure. Uh, why, why doesn't that make sense for them? So, uh, good, uh, that's a good question. And uh, so, 
But when you start running multiple drives in a single chassis, what you have is a thing called angular velocity, or uh, it's called rads per second, or rotational vibration. You'll see it, uh, you know, as R A D S slash, you know, uh, S E C, or different things like that, or R V sometimes. That angular, or, uh, the rotational vibration can come most commonly from an adjacent drive. Okay. Because the, so the drive is shaking so fast. Yeah, they, what causes a drive to shake is uh, not that the spindle's out of balance necessarily, but it, its head mechanism, you know, is going back and forth, and this drive's head mechanism is trying to seek different tracks, and they interfere with each other. You can also have cooling fans that'll introduce that. You can have structural vibration. So you're saying yeah. the case around it, so all these little vibrations, all these the fans, little vibrations and the hard drives, everything else right. inside that case that's moving, it's all causing right. vibration and, and that might harm yeah. the drive. Exactly, because what happens there is that head is trying to seek a track on that rotating media, and there's tens of thousands of tracks per inch. So it's got to stay on a specific data track and then go seek another one, and it's got to hit it. And uh, if it can't, there, then you start running into data errors. On top of that, just by the design nature of the drives, uh, the desktop and notebook drives are a order of magnitude less reliable. That means you're going to get a read bit error, even if they're in the correct environment, uh, you know, where you're not dealing with rotational vibration and that kind of thing. Ten times more frequently on a desktop or notebook drive than you will on a enterprise or a nearline type of drive. Wow. And, and then if you step over to the mission critical drives, like Seagate Savio series or something like that, that are really the kind of drives that should be used in exchange servers or big databases, things like that, it, they're yet another order of magnitude more reliable. So another way of saying that is you'll see 10 times less errors on each one of those generations or designs, you know, as you're stepping up from uh, the desktop notebook type of drive, you're going to see about uh, one bit be read badly out of every 10 to the 14th. You go to the uh, uh, next step up, the near line drives, the enterprise drives, it's 10 to the 15th. You go to the mission critical drives, it's one bit, it's going to be read bad out of every 10 to the 16th. So there's uh, different things. You can even tell, uh, you know, one of the old ways of telling how well something's built, well, it still applies to hard drives. You lift a desktop drive, they're much lighter. They don't have things like uh, the spindle is attached both at the top and the bottom of the shaft on most of the uh, enterprise line drives. Okay. It's just attached at the bottom on a desktop uh, drive. It's less cost. Sure, sure. It's all about getting the bottom price, but exactly. not necessarily right. the reliability so, that's required in a server or a right. enterprise so, class. So, so you asked, uh, you know, you're putting another drive in the RAID array. Right. Gives you some redundancy, but it also introduces rotational vibration. So, and what do the enterprise drives have that the desktop drives don't to, uh, to compensate for this rotational vibration? They've got rotational vibration sensors, for one thing. Oh. And that helps them adjust for that. And we'll show you a chart here, and it'll show you drive performance of the three different types of drives versus rotational vibration. And it's very detailed, very, uh, very easy to see the difference in performance. Wow. So it's uh, really easy to see that, so we'll show that chart. Fantastic. Um, the, uh, there's many other things that uh, factor in here, too. There's just more data integrity checks going on, uh, which, again, introduces more complex circuitry. And uh, Does that and make them... Run slower than a desktop drive by having no, these data integrity checks. Or? No, they're not. They're not running slower. It's just more work's got to be done in the same amount of time. 
Okay. So, and you and can so also... features added to these drives exactly, that allow them to... Right. Uh, to and in many cases, uh, if you get into the mission critical drives, they're running at 10,000 RPMs or 15,000 okay. RPMs. So you have lower latencies. Okay, to help compensate for right, that as well. Right, to help compensate for that as well. But to get back to your question here of, you know, I've got multiple drives here, uh, so that I'm protecting myself that way. The false uh, thing about that, though, is if you have one of the drives drop out on yes. you, and you're using desktop drives, and this would uh, apply on any type of drive. If a drive drops out, you're going to have to enter into a RAID rebuild situation. Yes. Uh, what happens there is, depending on the type of RAID uh, ray you're using, and RAID 5 is really common, RAID 1 is common, Absolutely. especially in the lower end systems, uh, you get one hiccup during that rebuild and the whole array is toast at that point and your data has gone south. Then you're into, if you're lucky enough to have done a backup to some other storage device, then you're betting on getting that recovered and think of the time involved and the productivity lost. So, so even though you might have a RAID 1 or a RAID 5, you still might not be as protected as you think you are, especially right. if you're using desktop class hard drives exactly. instead of enterprise class hard drives. Exactly. One of the